Okay, so today we're going to be rekeying a profile cylinder. Now I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this. Um, one of them is going to be from the top up, and then I'll also attach a video that's going to be from the bottom, uh, where we actually take the cylinder apart and actually use like a cradle to get this thing undone. Uh, also, we might have Allen head pieces up here, or we could also possibly have um, a strip or a cap or a sliding cap that goes in here or a plastic white cap. If you have those plastic caps or caps of any kind, I highly recommend you keep some screen spline in your truck because those plastic caps tend to break and you can actually stuff that down in there and it will hold all of the top pins in place while you service the cylinder or while you put it back. Uh, the other thing we're going to need right here is a 16th inch, uh, I believe it's 16th inch, um, Allen head. So let's see if we can get a little pick of that. Put those over there. Okay, so what I like to do is make sure that you keep all of these pieces directly in order with the way they came out. So I'm going to... And then we're literally going to pretty much intentionally explode the cylinder or dump it all out. Now, if you're working on one of these that's out in the field and hasn't been used in a long time, really good idea to run some brake clean or some kind of solvent through the cylinder, blow it out really good, get it all dried off, get all the solvent dissolved off of it, and then rehydrate it before you start trying to service it with either some uh, super slick or brake clean or whatever you want to use. Um, just because that's going to really help those pins free up. What can happen is they get stuck in here, and because this actually sits upside down in the door like this, when it sits upside down like this in the door, all of the dirt, debris, and crap is getting stuck down in those, um, the pin chambers. Okay, so there's one, two, three, oh, I guess I dumped them all out, okay. Uh, and then the rest will be springs. Okay. So now we just kind of organize this. And then I would get a key blank as well. And if you're having trouble with pins coming out, wrapping this back and forth is going to be a good thing. And then you can also manipulate the cylinder and the pins from the top. If you get a, a pick or something, you can shove down in there, kind of grab things, grab a spring, hook it back out. All of that fun stuff can happen while you've got it in this position. So, what are we gonna need to do now? Um, I'm just, it, it would almost be like rekeying this to a different key, because I don't know which of the pins actually fit in there. Um, so, one of the things that you'll need to do is like, this one has the number stamped on it. I'll also tell you another little trick and secret about these locks. Oftentimes, the number that is written on the key and the actual pin that will fit in there could possibly be different. And what I mean by that is a lot of times I find these cylinders there, we've got them all over the place here. A lot of times the plug milling is different on this than almost any other cylinder. And therefore it's going to take a different size pin because that root depth is now different because the circumference of the lock is now actually different if you're following me on this. So if it calls for a number six pin, it would actually be a number five that actually fits in there. And let me see if that's gonna hold true with this one. Okay, and there's a way to test. Also, you're gonna need to make sure that you always push this key all the way in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it likes to stick out, okay? It likes to stick out a little bit. And that is not helpful sometimes, okay? So you're gonna have to remember, if you just think you're gonna hold the key and just let it sit there, not the case. So what I'll do is this is a number six pin and it's calling for a number six right here on the thing. Let's see if we can get a better view of that. There we go. Okay, number six, number six. Oop, I think I dropped it in the wrong way. Make sure it's pin pointed down, okay. And then before I add anything else, I'm gonna push the key in all the way, and I'm gonna push and stuff that pin all the way down from the top, and I'm gonna check 
and see if I can turn freely. So this is one of those occasions where these, I believe they're US made GMS cylinders, are actually what they say they are. A lot of times you'll run into Hoppy and Eva and all of these different ones out in the field. If you do, and the, the pin that you're putting in is not correct, it will let you know right then and there, okay? So I've got one of these that's a seven. So in order, I'm gonna just reuse the pins. I'm just gonna set them up in order from biggest to smallest. This is also a really cool technique you can use if you do what I did and just dump the cylinder and don't know which pins go where. Okay, I'm gonna start off by lining them all up, putting them all in a row like this. This is actually locksmith tip right here, okay? See if we can get a picture of that real close. Okay, this is a locksmith tip right here. The reason I do that is now I'll be able to just run through and see what we have. Okay, so I need a six. So I can tell that one of those, that one's my seven. So I'm gonna use my six. I'm gonna put it in. And then I'm gonna do the test where I shove it all the way down push the key all the way in, and then I'm gonna rebuild each and every one of these cylinders one at a time, or these chambers rather, if you will. Okay, so I'm gonna do one, and then I'm gonna straight. Next, I put so I put the bottom pin in first, I test it, and then I'll put my top pin in, I'll test it again, I'll put my, this is gonna save you so much time and pain and anguish if you listen to me, okay? Put my spring in, turn it again. If you have any hang-up, you will know exactly where the hang-up is based on what step you just did, all right? I have beat my head against the wall messing with these things for hours in some cases, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back on here. It probably would have been a lot easier to put it on the actual Allen head first to give me something to grab onto. Okay, now we're gonna Put the thread in. Want to make sure that it's even. Okay, so we're gonna jump up here. Want to make sure that it's even and that there's no. You don't want to. You don't want to sink it all the way tight. You just need to make sure that it's not sticking up. So that is bad. Okay, no good. That's exactly what we want. So then I test it again, and we're still working, okay? If we're still working, then that's really good, and we can continue doing what we're doing. So I've got a three. Next, I'm going to say that's this pin right here. Shove him in there. Do my test. Actually, I can, yeah, I'm going to do my test with this. Beautiful. This little trick right here will save you countless hours of trying to figure out what the problem is. And that's how I figured out how a lot of the other cylinders are milled differently and require different specs because the Schleg pins on those depths that are printed on the key do not work with the, that system in some cases. And here again, just go ahead and put it so it's flush. Test again, looking good. Next one, six. So I've got my other six right here. Put that back in, push this down, looking really good, again, got a top pin, and a spring, like so, and a cap screw or a top screw, Allen head screw, whatever you want to call these little guys here. Key pin, key pin stack screw. I'm gonna have to submit all these wonderful ideas to the list council. All right, and we got one more here. So I'm gonna push this in just like this. Oh, actually I did, I messed up on that one. My apologies. We gotta do a bottom pin first. Seven. So finally, this is the one that I'm considering a seven. I think that's our seven. I'm about to find out whether it is or not. Okay, 
like that. Works better smooth. That was our number seven. Now we need to get our top pin in place. Then our spring. Okay. And then our top pin like so. And then finally, our very last one. Make sure you always put all the pins back in place. Now the reason that we build each individual chamber like this is because they are so different and difficult and you can't really see what's going on. So you need to isolate where that problem is when you have the original problem, okay? Not later, that's gonna be a bad time later. That in, spring, and this fella. And there you have it. We now have our cylinder all rebuilt. You can see that it fully functions and operates the lobe of the lock like this. This little piece here, and like so. If you have problems with this after you get done, there are several things that could be happening. One of the things that can happen is you'll notice this lobe can actually move independently. That means that that little bit of spring tension that we were talking about before that kept kicking the key out, remember we were seeing that? It kept trying to push it out to here. There's a spring and a little driver pin in here that you're actually putting in this. So when you insert the key, you could pick this lock cylinder and it would not actually unlock the door. It would pick the lock cylinder, but it's not gonna unlock the door because the tip of the key isn't driven in. Unless you're using a leashy tool or something that's going all the way inside and engaging that internal spring-driven pin to rotate the lobe, it's not gonna happen. Lobe, drive cam, Again, we'll talk to list council about what they want to call all of these specific pieces. But So this piece has to be uh, free spinning for the thumb turn on the inside, and then it also has to allow us to engage it from the outside. I'm actually wondering if we turn that over. Yeah, so there it is. Okay, so profile cylinders, they can be miserable, they can be good money, uh, and some people know how to work on them and some people don't. If you do know how to work on them, you can put that money into your bank account or bring that in for your business as opposed to giving it to the competition. They are worth understanding and learning and dealing with. I've also seen ones uh, from overseas, uh, Vincos. This is also an excellent demonstration or an excellent view of what's happening inside there. Okay, so you can actually see all of the pins, you can see everything that's actually happening here, right? So you can see all of the, how everything actually works. And this is a double keyed cylinder. This is a different brand here, okay? But they're the ones that made this one, and it works on either side, controlling that um, driver piece in there. But this is what's happening inside your profile cylinder, just so you know, so you can understand and see how those springs work and see how the shear line is met and see how everything works inside there. Alrighty, there you have it. For more information, check out the website below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.